Hey guys, welcome to Need It Make It and the first episode of Fix It Fridays. I picked up this used Dewalt die grinder for 35 bucks on Facebook Marketplace and I need a die grinder in order to fix that gigantic Apple vise, which is pretty ancient. It's got two cracks in it, one on each side to grind those out. But I need something like this in order to do that. Problem is, this die grinder needs a little bit of work. It needs a little bit of love. So in this video, we're gonna fix this thing right up, get it working properly. It does work right now, but I'm gonna get it working better, clean it up completely. I'm just gonna show you the good stuff. I'm gonna cut out everything else, try and give you the most interesting video possible. So stick around. This is a DW, I believe, 888 two inch die grinder. It says it runs at 19,000 RPM. All right, first things first, we have to test to see if this thing actually does work. And I did test it when I bought it. So here's the issue I'm kind of concerned about. We need to fix this. And of course, whenever you take something apart, there's always something in there you don't expect. This looks like a pretty well used die grinder. So who knows what's going on inside there. I want to check the brushes as well. Uh, my understanding is this came from an industrial use facility. So it probably got used quite a bit. The other problem is that the safety switch has been removed. Start by removing this little flap sander. See if everything's in good shape with the collet. Everything looks good there. All right, let's take out these brushes. They look pretty good. At least that one does. What's going on in there? So it's chipped on the edge quite a bit, but I think that's going to be still fine for a little while. Okay, let's start to dig into it. This is a number 20 Torx. Have a look at what I found here. These two black wires have the sheathing completely compressed. So it doesn't look like they were in the right spot when this was assembled. I think they're supposed to be in here and safe. And the internals come apart with a 15, number 15 Torx. It's just electrical tape around the outside. Grounding wire continues to this terminal. Look at that wire. Look at how much it's been squashed. Whoa, I don't think I've ever seen a wire that's been compressed like that before. They are probably completely mangled. Hey, it's been working, so, uh, <laughs> Guess that wire was never going to pull out. And go ahead and remove this aluminum bearing housing. Take off this grounding screw. This section is actually really light. So this is all 
this is all aluminum right through here, which is kind of cool. I almost want to use this on my metal lathe, mount this, but uh, this rubber grip might cause some problems. So that's interesting. These little tabs, see how they line up. This is a bit of a strange design. I think this is just a shield for the air, air circulation to be redirected out of these ports. Oh, look at that. This is rubber. Bearings seem okay. Rubber, what's going on there? Okay. So uh, allows some a small amount of movement. Hey, look inside here. The mating pieces, look at how small these tabs are in these tabs as well. There's, it's allowing a bit of movement upon startup. I wonder why that would be as well. Or is there something missing? Sometimes with these kind of interlocking pieces, you'll see a spider, like a rubber spider in there. Um, but not on this one. Hmm. It looks like it's not worn. It is machined that way. Okay, this is kind of embarrassing. This is the rubber spider. It must have uh, come out. I did not see that. Anyway, interlocks like so. That makes a lot more sense to me. Well guys, if you don't have a tool, make a tool. We'll see if this is going to work. I just ground the end of some really low quality Allen keys. Well, guys, I think I lost that battle. I think I'm going to do more damage than good if I continue with that. I really need the right tool. So I've got this little wrench I've modified. I don't even know what this was from. Gonna take this electrical tape off and see what we have underneath for those terminals that ooh. that should be easy enough to replace. I really like to reuse the original cord because I like the plug end and I like that being one piece molded. There's no messing around, no chance it's gonna come off. I'm just trying to match the original wire length approximately, just so I'm close. I'll strip the ends and put new terminal connectors on. The original ring terminals are pretty good. You can see that they both compress the wire and the sheathing around the wire. So these are not gonna come off. Unfortunately, the ones that I have now are not quite as good. They'll just compress the wire. So what I'm gonna do as well is put some heat shrink tubing on there. While I have this apart, take a look at the brushes they're working just fine. Even though I was having trouble getting the brush out, it's operating correctly.
time to start cleaning this up. So I've got a couple different options. I've got your regular alcohol, paint thinner, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, generic Magic Eraser. And I got one other option that I think is gonna work really well I'd like to try. So alcohol first. I wouldn't say that that worked very well. It did remove a little bit of grease and grime. So how about the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser? This is a little bit of abrasive in here. Let's see if that works well. That actually works not too bad. Not too bad at all. Try the paint thinner. Oops, oh no, I lost my toothbrush. She thought the paint thinner was gonna work better. Uh, that didn't, did okay. So what product does a great job of cleaning your dirty hands? Let's say if you're doing some automotive work, greasy, dirty hands. It's this stuff here. So let's give that a try. Let me go ahead and put this back together. It is white to terminal number one. So this time I'm tucking the wires into their, what I believe is the proper location. So all that's left to do is put this back together and try it out. Make sure my electrical's working okay and then I can focus on that top bearing. It has been bugging me. you can hear that bearing is no good okay we're not giving up on this thing I really want to get those bearings out of there I think there's two in here because this shaft is really steady in here and it's allowed to kind of float in this area where the motor connects to that shaft and where that spider is so I've made a custom tool with just a little bit of clearance in this hole so it can go over that shaft. I've welded two stainless steel pins to the steel bar. And I think this is gonna work fairly well. Now one thing is a possible, one thing that is a possibility is that this is a left hand threaded nut and that I've been tightening it rather than loosening it. No markings on there. And the instruction manual online is horrific. So uh, I'm gonna try both heating this up with a heat gun I've got the black paint on there so I can get a, a gauge of the temperature. And we'll see how it goes. Um, maybe try in left hand. Like that. So we're going to try righty loosey. This is a snug fit, so I have to. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I just have to figure out how to get those bearings out of there. Just, uh, I just have some mild steel. Oh, really easily. Okay. So I just need to take off this little coupler piece. What I'm going to do for now, because they're not in horrific shape, uh, they could use some new grease. I'm going to clean them out first and then re-grease them.
put the shields back on and get everything back together. I'm just going to clean the end with some alcohol to make sure all the grease is off. I want to reapply some thread locker. I'm pretty sure the original had thread locker on it. It was a little bit crusty coming off and difficult to take off as well. And back into a clean bearing housing. And the piece that gave me the most trouble I've had in a while This is what came out of the bearings. It's a lot of little pieces of metal. All right, guys, how about a first test with the newly packed bearings? Looks like the grease is just a flying out of there. Well, it might be a good idea to replace those bearings after all. At least we know how to do it. Reason that you guys can think of why that might be flying out of there, I don't know. Let me know what you think. So I went ahead and ordered new bearings because obviously those bearings weren't going to work. I was able to get the small bearing off no problem at all with the gear puller, but this big bearing is giving me some trouble. Loaded those in, and while I was at it, I also polished up the shaft here. So the only thing that I haven't fixed is this lock and I'm okay with it just as it is. I'm just going to use some Velcro if I need to lock this in an on position. Now with the new bearings, let's go ahead and try it out. And as you can see, there's no grease coming out. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you to all my patrons and subscribers. Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.